This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. In the news this week, one of the biggest issues in the coverage of the slow march to the so-called fiscal cliff was whether to let the Bush tax cuts expire for wealthy Americans. And that led to the inevitable discussion of whether being rich really made you rich. Here's NBC veteran Tom Brokaw on Meet the Press. A lot of people don't realize that in the large urban and suburban areas of America, $250,000 doesn't make you rich. You've got two kids in college at $60,000. If you're a boomer, you may have a dependent parent of some kind. You're spending another $20,000, $25,000 on. So we have to have the definition of what is the middle class. Now, a lot of people would probably welcome the opportunity to struggle by on $250,000 a year, but pundits have this notion that in big cities like New York, everybody makes that kind of money. Bloggers, like in this case Elspeth Reeve of The Atlantic, remind us that actually very few New Yorkers make that kind of money, at most 6% of households. And remember, an increase in the marginal tax rates means you'd pay additional taxes only on income above that amount. That's a basic tax fact often missing from the coverage. Well, it isn't that media don't believe there will be victims of the fiscal cliff-related changes. They just seem to define that term differently. CBS Evening News on December 28th had a segment on the fears faced by people who've inherited land worth millions of dollars. A Napa Valley couple has a 120-acre vineyard worth $8 million, but we learn they sold land in 1972 to pay estate taxes after his grandfather's death. Why is that relevant? Well, the couple who inherited the land, their plans to hand it over to their children would be ruined, we're told, if the estate tax rose from 35 to 55 percent on estates worth more than $1 million. It's one thing to focus attention on a tax paid by a tiny sliver of the population. 0.29 percent of estates would face any tax at all in 2013, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. But once CBS has made this choice, they might at least have tipped viewers to the fact that there was never a chance the estate tax would go to 55 percent, since not even Democrats were pushing for anything like that. Or have mentioned that the estate tax has been falling since 2001. And even more important, the amount exempted from the tax has increased. It's now $5 million a person. And that exemption, by the way, is indexed to inflation. So it will rise over time, unlike, say, the minimum wage that many non-vineyard owners rely on. Well, finally, the New York Times headline on December 21st was vivid. Syria unleashes cluster bombs on town, punishing civilians. Right from the top, then, the story emphasized what many people have long argued, that cluster munitions are unacceptably dangerous to non-combatants because they are, as reporter C.J. Chivers noted, impossible to use precisely. Recounting the screams and desperate gatherings of Syrian townspeople as bombs fell on their homes, you might wonder what kind of country would use these weapons. And then, further down, a careful reader would notice the sentence explaining, the use of cluster munitions is banned by much of the world, although Syria, like the United States, is not party to that international convention. Well, that's how it seems to work. The paper's accounts of cluster bombs used by designated enemies can be quite direct and vivid. Gaddafi is using cluster bombs in civilian area. That was a page one headline in the paper in April 2011 over a piece that talked about bits of human flesh blasted against a cinder block wall. But then, further down in passing, the United States has used cluster munitions itself in battlefield situations in Afghanistan and Iraq and in a strike on suspected militants in Yemen in 2009. Well, that Yemen strike, which killed 14 women and 21 children, was part of the U.S. secret drone war in that country. It was under and misreported in the United States. The New York Times, for example, covered it eight months after it happened. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.